Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We greet you in the name that is above every name, the marvelous, matchless, and awesome name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Welcome to our Sunday School lesson today at First Baptist Church Denby. We are so happy that you have joined us today. The title of our lesson for today is The Word Saves, coming from John 12, 27 through 50. So as we open up our lesson for today, let me ask you several questions just to get started. Was Jesus a prophet? And did Moses prophesy about a true prophet who would come? And was Moses just talking about Old Testament prophets like Isaiah, Elijah, or Ezekiel? So let's take a look at Deuteronomy, 20, uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18, which would help us to answer those questions. Now, Deuteronomy 18 and 18 states, the Lord said unto Moses, I will raise up for them a prophet. And that word prophet is capitalized, so that's significant in itself. And it's also singular. I will raise up a prophet for them like you from among their brethren and put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him, and it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. In other words, that last phrase, I will require it of him, says God would deal with those who will not listen to what this prophet proclaims in his name. So what is this saying and how is it relevant to our lesson today. Here's some more information that would show you how relevant it is. Now, Moses, remember I read the uh, scripture concerning Moses and a prophet that was to come. Now, Moses was a strong deliverer. What I wanna show you is Moses and Jesus Christ to compare the two, to show the parallels and the similarities. So Moses was a strong deliverer. And Jesus is a strong deliverer, also a redeemer and a savior. Moses was an Israelite from among his own people. And Jesus Christ is also an Israelite from among his own people, among his own brethren. Moses was a prophet and he was a mediator representing the people before God. And Jesus Christ is also a prophet. And he is a mediator between God and man. And we know that he is the mediator of the new covenant. Now, Moses spoke God's word. Jesus Christ also spoke about what God said. Moses' message was rejected. The people wanted to return to Egypt. And Jesus Christ, his message that God spoke through him was also rejected. And they even tried to stone him and try to kill him. Now, there's even more information concerning this coming from Acts 7, 37. And it states what Stephen had spoken, this mighty man of God who was full of wisdom and faith. He spoke this same thing concerning Moses. It said, Moses himself told the people of Israel, God would raise up for you a prophet like me, talking about Moses, from among your own people. Now, Moses had received this life-giving message to pass on to God's people from, a from an angel while he was on Mount Sinai. Now, this prophet was none other then Jesus Christ, the incarnate one, the word made flesh, the mediator of the better covenant, the one who is prophet, priest, and king, the resurrection and the light, and the light of the world. Remember, Jesus 
referred to himself as the resurrection and the light and life and the light of the world. Jesus, our strong deliverer and savior of the whole world is the prophet that they were talking about. And remember that he is prophet, priest, and king fulfilling all the offices. Now, Psalm 107, 20 states, he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Yes, Jesus came to seek and save the lost, to heal his people. Now, let us have a word of prayer as we proceed further into our lesson. Father in heaven, we just thank you right now for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you that Jesus Christ is prophet, he's priest, he's king, and he is the resurrection and the life, and he is the light of the world, and so much more. God, we thank you for your word, and help us to internalize this word that we're going to learn about today, so that we can walk according to your commandments and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's move on and get further into our lesson. Again, the title of our lesson is The Word Saves, and it comes from John 12, 27 through 50. Now, they have chosen um, a few verses from chapter 12, but we uh, know that it is important to read the entire chapter because you can get a better understanding of what is taking place. Now, the lesson aim, there are three of them, to recognize that Jesus is God, to desire a closer relationship with God through choosing to follow Christ, to share with others the opportunity to come into the light of Christ. Now, there is a verse that is contained in our focal scripture, scriptures, verses, uh, coming from John 12, 46, King James Version. And it states, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in the darkness. Beautiful, beautiful word of words of life. Now, our focal verses come from John uh, 12, 44 through 50. Now, get your Bibles and let's read together. Starting with the 44th verse. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light. There's that focal verse again. I am come a light unto the world, that whosoever believeth on me, should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words has one that judgeth him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment which I should say, and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. The word of God is powerful and wonderful and healing for the soul. All right, let's move on. Now, our previous lesson addressed the I am statement I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus spoke this truth to Mary, the sister of Lazarus who had died. Death had brought sorrow. It had brought hopelessness, despair, and finality to this family. Such sadness when Lazarus had died. But Jesus spoke these glorious words of life to Lazarus. And he said, Lazarus, come forth, and death had, could not keep him in the grave. Now, this demonstrated that Jesus had power over death, and he had power over the grave. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, 
it's going to repeat a scripture from Hosea 13 and 14. Notice how, how the New Testament uh, pulls from the Old Testament. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 states, O death, where is thy victory? And O grave, where is your sting? All right, now, as we continue to lay the foundation for our lesson, let's review the I am statements in the Gospel of John. Remember that we've already reviewed I am the resurrection and the light. And today's lesson is going to help us to understand even further about Jesus being the light of the world. Now, the first I am statement, I am the bread of life coming from John 4, 41, 48, and 51. He who comes to me shall never hunger. Isn't that beautiful? And he who believes in me shall never thirst. The second one, I am the light of the world we talked about. It comes from John 8 and 12. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The third one, I am the door of the sheep, come from, coming from John 10, 7 through 9. And it states, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he shall be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Remember the scripture says, anyone who comes, tries to come any other way, he is a thief and a robber. Now, the next one is, I am the good shepherd, coming from John 10 and 11. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. The scripture further states that the sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Now, the next one is I am the way, the truth, and the life coming from John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. We know that there are teachings that there are many ways to come to the Father. We know that that is not true according to scripture. Because God says no one can come to the Father except through me. And the last one, the seventh one, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser, coming from John 15, 1 through 4. And it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amazing. Now, the first main idea, believing and seeing Jesus coming from John 44 through 45. Main idea two, Jesus is the light in darkness, verses 46. Main idea three, Jesus is the rejected savior, verses 47 through 48. And main idea four, Jesus speaks as the Father speaks, verses 49 through 50. Now, main idea one, let's move right into it, believing and seeing Jesus. Now, 44, verses 44 and 45. Isn't it interesting that it doesn't matter how pious and how religious one might seem to be, when they are not walking in the light, uh, they seem to operate from a place of darkness. Now, if you're not walking in the light, according to the scripture, you're walking in darkness and your deeds are evil. Even your perceptions about things and your mindset about things come from a worldly place and a carnal place. Now, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were still plotting to kill, kill Jesus, having meetings and strategizing about how they would get rid of Jesus and even how they would get rid of Lazarus, the one Jesus raised from the dead. He was in the grave, but he was raised from the dead 
but they were ruthless and evil and sinister, even plotting to kill a man who had just been raised from the dead. Now, there were some who believed, but there were others who were like snakes, reporting to religious leaders and telling them what Jesus had done. Now, six days before the Passover, there were some events that happened. One was a beautiful, wonderful e event in which Jesus is now in Bethany, and he is having dinner with Mary and Martha and, yes, Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. The dinner is prepared. Martha is helping to serve, but Mary, she anoints the feet of Jesus with expensive perfume, and then she wipes, wipes his feet with her hair. Of course, Judas complains, uh, but Jesus said, let her alone. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. Now, there were other events that took place. The triumphant entry of Jesus takes place, and Jesus speaks about his death. Notice how Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure and the events that are going to soon take place. Remember uh, chapter 12 through, through chapter uh, 21. Uh, when you divide them, it is called um, it is called the book of glory. And so this the time has come for him to enter into his glory. Jesus said, the light will be among you a little longer. He, he tells his disciples, he says, continue on your way while you have the light so that the darkness will not come upon you. Uh, for the one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. And that comes from our chapter, chapter 12, 12 and 35. So all the God signs that they had seen, despite all the miracles, the signs, the wonders, many still did not believe him. Now, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about this very thing in chapter 58. And this proved and verified that, that what Isaiah was prophesying was absolutely true and had come to pass at this time. And Isaiah had written, who had believed our message or our report? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? That comes from the New Living Translation. The Message Bible says it like that: this. Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? They didn't imagine that the Messiah would look like Jesus would walk like Jesus, would talk like Jesus, but instead he was despised and rejected of men. He was accused of being an imposter and, and by being a mere man, they looked at him as being a mere man. Uh, they turned their backs on him. Uh, they, they looked the other way. They wouldn't hear what he had, had to say. They heard what they said, but they didn't internalize it in their hearts. So he was despised and they did not care. They came, he came unto his own and they received him not. In other words, they missed the day of his visitation. Do you know that you can miss the day of his visitation as well, in a sense, when you think that he is gonna visit you or when he is gonna manifest himself uh, in your presence, he's gonna manifest himself in a certain way. You have a preconceived understanding that he's gonna manifest himself in one particular way, the way you perceive it, but instead he comes another way and then you miss his visitation. Let us not miss the visitation of our Lord when he wants to manifest himself in our presence and in our midst. Main idea two, Jesus is the light of the world, coming from verses 46. Jesus is the true light 
that has come into the world. And you are children of the light. You are God's children. According to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5, it says, for you are all children of light, children of the day. And it and explains it and said, we are not of the night and we are not, nor are we of the darkness. Now, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, he dispels the darkness and it said the darkness comprehended it not. He illuminates one's path and enlightens and provides direction and instructions. He is the compass for our way. He produces light in us. He reveals the, pre is the presence of our God and shows us the heart of the Father, his love, his mercy, his grace. Uh, he, help, he travels the way of peace. In other words, light moves us to a place of peace. He provides understanding and provides warmth and comfort to our hearts and to our souls. And he energizes us as the light of the world and reveals beauty, the beauty of salvation. He reveals the hidden things and pierces the darkness and enhances our vision so that we are not stumbling in the dark. Now, 1 John 1 and 7 says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. That's that word we introduced uh, on last week, uh, koinonia. That means the fellowship of the brethren, the fellowship and the communion of believers with the unity of the spirit. And then it goes on to say, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But when you're walking in the darkness, you stumble and it will call, the darkness will cause you to walk in paths that you should not be walking in. It will cause you to make decisions that are worldly decisions that does not represent the light. It will cause one to leave, it, leave into paths of danger. And it causes one to slip and have distress and fear and confusions and cause you to grope just like, grope in the dark, just like a blind man. Wow. Let's move on. Let's look at main idea three. Jesus, the rejected savior, verses 47 through 48. Jesus makes it clear that he did not come to judge the world, but to save it, save the world. Remember the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Remember that they wanted to stone her. But Jesus said, let he uh, who, is, who is without sin cast the first stone. And they began to leave one by one, dropping their stones. And then he said to the woman, where are your accusers? And he told her, go and sin no more. Jesus did not come to accuse her, but he came to save her and to bring her back to a place of wholeness and restoration. But those who received him not, refused to believe, refused to receive him, re rejected the message of Christ, because they had spiritual blindness. They were filled with unbelief. So they rejected the Lord. They mocked the Lord. They called him an imposter. They referred to him as just the mere man. They rebuked him. And they had constant scrutiny of him. And their behavior toward him and what they said to him were, represented despicable behavior. They ignored Christ as if he was nothing. They despised him. They plotted against him and they attempted to stone him and to kill him. Yet it was the will of the Lord that Jesus would be that suffering servant. The first aid advent, in other words, the time when Jesus came into the world, he came as a suffering servant 
But when he comes again, when he breaks the sky again, he is going to come as a conquering king. Now, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, would take on the punishment that we, we deserve. And he, they, he would bear the pain that we should have borne. And he would die for the sins of all mankind. But those who rejected him, those who despised him and refused to receive his message will be judged by the words they hear. Sometimes people say, don't judge me. But the very word that Jesus has spoken will judge you in the last day. Those who despised him, those who rejected him, those who refused his words cannot deny that they never heard what he said. Therefore, they will be judged by the very words that they heard. The word of God through Jesus Christ will convict them and render them guilty. Now, their deliverance had come through Jesus. Their peace and joy had come. Their salvation, their redemption had come through Jesus Christ. And they refused the Father's mission of mercy in, send, in sending Jesus Christ. It was the Father's rescue mission, his act of love. All those who reject him will be judged by the very words that they have heard. In other words, the word of the Lord that have been spoken will judge them and will, them, will accuse them in the last day. The eternal word expresses the heart of our father. Now, the truth, his standards, his precepts, his words, God's word is eternal and stands forever. The everlasting and indestructible words. You can't destroy the words of God. Now, Jeremiah said that they have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, coming from Jeremiah 2.13. Now, Zechariah also says in chapter 13, verse 1, and he tells of a coming day, in that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and the people of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanness. And we know that the living water offered to all for the refreshment of our soul has been given to us for Jesus Christ is uh, that living water. He offers that living water the, for the refreshment of our souls, for the salvation of our souls, for the redemption of our souls. Wow, wonderful. Main idea four, Jesus speaks as the Father speaks, verses 49 through 50. Jesus only spoke what the Father told him to speak. In John 12, 49 and 50, remember the, these are, this comes from our focal verses. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father who sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Now, Jesus is referred to as the eternal word. He expresses the heart of the Father. He moves in the authority of the Father, and he declares also the heart of the Father with boldness and and with truth. Now, the Father's amazing love was on display. Oh, what love the Father has for mankind. You see his mercy on display. You see his grace on display. His saving power and his loving kindness. You see his compassion and his forgiveness on display. Because when he sent Jesus, he did not send Jesus to judge but he sent him to seek and save the lost. Now, in Jesus's mouth, there, was, there were no deviations from what the Father has spoken to him. 
He spoke the words of the Father. There were no half truths. There were there was no logical thinking and no philosophical rhetoric and no talking loud and saying nothing. He spoke the truth and nothing but the truth. He spoke the words of eternal life. Now John 6 and 63 states, the spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken unto you are spirit and life. Now we live in a body and we, we can uh, access our environment and our world through our senses. But we know that life is spiritual. Now here's an admonition from Luke 9, 26. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the son of man shall be ashamed of them when he comes in all of his glory and in the glory of the father and of the holy angels. And, and another important thing to remember, the world is bold and brazen in everything that they do. And they are big and bold enough to do whatever they set their minds to do. But as believers, we must be bold as well. We must be uncompromising, unapologetic, and unashamed. Can I say that again? We must be uncompromising, unapologetic, and unashamed. Romans 1, 16 states, For I am not ashamed of the good news or the gospel about Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentiles. So Jesus' time had come to be glorified the sinless son of God would make atonement for our sins. He would, he would satisfy the justice and the holiness of our God by dying in our place as a substitute. Oh, what love he has for us. Remember, he came to seek and save the lost. So this concludes our lesson, but if you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, this is the perfect time. It is an appointed time for you to do so. And Romans 10 and 9, 10, 9 through 10 shows you just how you can become born again. That if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Pray that prayer unto the Lord and become born again. And the scripture further states, and he will never put you to shame. This concludes our lesson. May grace and peace be yours until we meet again.